Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I'm going to show you a few more examples of importing your 3D characters into RPG Developer Bakken. Now, I found this character who is Avalyn by JJ Studio on their ArtStation webpage, and I will put a link to that in the description below. This is a free model that you can kind of check out and benchmark and see if assets from this creator would fit your project. However, it is tailor-made for a Unity project, so it may require a little bit of work. Well, that's okay, because I'm here to make the Unity to Bakken conversion process much simpler for you. So let's just get started. All right, when you download any of these 3D character assets, it's a great idea to look through all of the folders and the different files that come with them to see exactly what it is you're getting. Avalon here comes with three folders, an FBX underscore generic, an FBX underscore humanoid, and a texture folder. The contents of the generic folder and the humanoid folder are roughly the same. They're a bunch of different FBX files. There's one FBX file called Avalon, and then there are a bunch of files named for different animations. So in theory, with these being FBX and them being separated into different animations like this, they should work just fine with Bakken. The humanoid folder has pretty much the same contents in it. We'll probably just ignore this one, and we'll check out the texture folder. The texture folder has a beautiful portrait of this character and what looks like an icon representing perhaps a skill for a hotbar or other UI. And then we've got texture maps for the character and her sword. Now these texture maps are going to wrap around our model and give it its appearance in our project. However, they need to be .png files, and it looks like they are .tga files. Bakken only supports .png for texture files for its models, but this is a very simple fix. We're just going to open them up in a paint program. I'm just using paint.net, and then we're just going to save them as .ping files instead. That seemed to work out just fine. They are identical to their TGA selves. All right, so I opened up my Bakken project from a previous video, and I'm just going to go to the resources menu on the left, and from there, 3D stamps, and then I'm going to add. I'm going to click select from file, and then I'm going to navigate to where I downloaded this character, and we'll just click her first 3D file, the avalon.fbx. We're going to leave the auto optimization when importing FBX file alone. We're going to leave it checked, and then we're going to set the scale actually to 0.01. Otherwise, I think she'd be gigantic. Now, now we'll click add and exit. The import materials window will come up. I'll just hit okay here. And there's our model. She imported at what looks to be the perfect size. She doesn't have any textures applied. We will fix that in just a moment. She looks great otherwise. Now we don't have anything next to her motion setting. So let's click on that, navigate to her model and click add and exit. And we seem to have a blank material and we need to assign her texture in Bakken. Now something I've mentioned in a previous video is that if this texture folder is in the folder where your 3D model is, if it's set up that way, pointing to the textures, it can't automatically apply them. That wasn't the case here. I tried to import this character with the texture folder already in the generic folder, and it didn't work. So in either case, we would just have to assign the texture in Bakken. That is going to be super easy. We're just going to click on this blank material setting right here on the right hand side of the screen. Click select from file, and then we're just going to navigate to the character's texture folder where we saved their PNG texture file. We'll click add and exit, and there she is. Lovely, beautiful. She has been textured perfectly. All right, keeping in mind that the 3D stamp and its motion and its model are all considered separate entities in Bakken, we're going to click on the models menu, navigate to Avalon, and we see that she doesn't have any textures here. The motions that we select for her are going to depend on her having textures here. So we're going to go to her materials, which again is a blank circle. When you click on that and the asset picker opens, it's going to automatically open in the same folder where we imported her texture the first time. And that's right here. You'll get this sort of strange ball preview of her texture file, but that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And we're just going to click add and exit and it adds the materials to her. And now she is ready to set motions. You'll also notice and probably did before now that there's a bit of black bordering around her hair. This was probably to keep the amount of polygons low, and this black can be transparent if we set our alphas. All right, it's time to assign a motion to this lady. So we're going to click on her in the motions menu, and we're going to rename this one to, wait, 
So this is what she'll be doing whenever she waits. She didn't have an animation that came with her where she was just kind of breathing or standing at idle, so unfortunately this will be a pretty static animation. We might have something a little bit more dynamic, but we can we can browse through the animations and see what we have. All right, so we need to add some more motions. Let's do that. Let's just click on add motion over here. We don't want to do it on the left-hand side of the screen or we'll actually introduce a new motion set in the motions folder. We want to do it over here on the right-hand side so that we associate the new motions with the existing character. And I've made that mistake. So this time I'm going to import everything that she came with, leave the settings alone and click add and exit. Now they'll all show up here. And whenever you click on them, they will all be properly skinned because they'll all be associated with the already skinned model. Oh, awesome. I found a great idle motion. We'll actually call that one wait. And it looks like we can loop this one and call it, uh, we'll call it walk. She does seem to be more running, but we'll find out if there's a more appropriate run animation. We have various attack animations, some really cool looking special attack animations. Wah! Something I didn't cover in any previous video is there's no limit to the amount of animations you can add to your character, or if there is, it's probably pretty high. I had a couple of example projects where there were just 10 animations or five animations, but you can have far more than that. That's just how many those models came with. Now this one only comes with about nine or 10, and I'm only going to use the walk and wait animations. So I'm going to delete the rest. Now something else, if I press down the shift key and move her around my map, she's going to look like this when she moves or she'll be T-posed otherwise. So I'm actually going to re-import the walk animation and I'm going to call it run. So we'll add motion. And even though it's the exact same one, it's going to allow me to import it because it's got a different name. All right, we have three animations, wait, walk, and run. We'll hit okay. Let's make her a cast. There's Avalyn. We're gonna click add and exit. And in game definition, we'll just make sure she is set to be our default cast. Now at this point, if you've done all of the things that I have done, you should have a perfectly fine working T posing model that it is not suited to your needs at all. All right, we'll see what we did wrong. So in my case, it may have been from adding Avalon to my project a few different times. And whenever this happens, you can get some duplicate files in your project. So we actually have to go back to our cast settings because our 3D stamp is set up correctly. And instead of clicking on the static T posing Avalon who doesn't have any motions, we're gonna click on the regular Avalon who has the correct name and she's got her motions registered right here. That's the one step I missed, my bad. So of you were asking how I was able to get the camera to zoom in and out, you use the G and T keys, but the camera will not zoom in and out if your keybinds don't allow it. So you'll have to go into your game settings, rules and operations, and you'll have to take out the forward slashes in front of the G and T keys. But once you do that, you can zoom in and out to your heart's content. Hi, Avalyn. It's nice to meet you. Actually, I see that the alpha textures were not set up automatically, so that's something we'll have to take care of ourselves. Other than that, though, she looks fantastic. <laughs> Really, really happy with the way this character looks. Dramatic zoom. All right, so let's say you've got your 3D character and you'd like to give it motions that you have found using Mixamo. Well, that should be simple enough. But just go to Mixamo. You will be required to log in with an account and then click upload character here on the right side. I'm actually going to upload Avalyn and she has been uploaded. So let's click next. And awesomely enough, it seems that her rig is perfectly compatible with Mixamo animations already. We don't need to set up where her knee joints and neck and the like are. She's just here and working. She doesn't have the skin on her, but that's something that we can do back in Bakin. For now, we can just preview the actual animations that she'll have. Where'd she go? Hey, come back here. Got one for silly dancing that I really appreciate, although it, it does clip quite a bit. She's putting her hands directly into her chest. You'll have to be careful. Some of these animations have them actually traversing over terrain, and that's not going to look quite right at all once you get that into Bakin. The character's animation will push them far forward than their actual collision is. You want them to be standing in place no matter what. All right, I want her to have this amazing twist dance. So we're gonna go ahead and download this animation. I'm gonna leave the settings here default. I'm just gonna leave format FBX because that's a must. The frames per second can be 30. For skin, I'm gonna leave that at width skin. And for keyframe reduction, I'm just gonna leave that set to none. And I'm gonna click download. Back in Bakin for my Avalon motion set. I'm gonna add a motion to that. There's the twist dance. Let's add an exit and it just works. I didn't have to do anything. She just dances. I thought this tutorial was going to be five times longer in this section, but she just works. 
It's amazing. I love it. She's so cute. We can name these motions whatever we want, by the way, if they're not already using one of the system recognized motion names like wait or walk or run or attack. I'm going to call this one dance and we can call up these animations using event panels in our project so that we can have our characters doing all of these things in our game whenever we want. We just have to event it. But I couldn't wait and I set her idle animation to be this dance. So now whenever she stops running, she's just going to dance in place. She's full of happiness. What can I tell you? And I am too. I hope this tutorial was of some use to you. I hope you're, that you're confident enough to go throw your models into Mixamo, get all those awesome animations, and just bring them right back into your Baking project. And you can scour the Unity Asset Store now, and as long as you're paying attention to those terms and conditions and end-user license agreements, and making sure that it's okay with the creator, obviously, if you decide to bring their work into a non-Unity platform, you now have a whole world of models at your disposal. Come on, do the dance. Do the dance with me. You know you want to. Just do it. Break loose. All right, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.